We are Sorted, a group of mates from London exploring the newest and best in the world of food whilst trying to have a few laughs along the way. <laughs> we've got chefs, we've got normal, and a whole world of stuff for you to explore, but everything we do starts with you. And here we are again, this is Jamie and I'm Ben. And yes, our chefs are doing it, you asked for it. It's a curry battle. What do you think I was gonna say? A few weeks back, us three normals had our ultimate curry battle. Now it's time to see what the chefs have got up their sleeves. In three, two, one. Right, I'm gonna recreate two of the best street food dishes I had in Delhi. Pani puri, which is like pastry that's fried, filled with potato, and then an incredibly spicy, tangy, herby sauce. And I'm making chana masala, chickpea curry. To begin with, I'm gonna make the pastry, which basically is semolina flour, baking powder, salt and water combined and kneaded into a dough. Now, as you knead semolina, it starts to absorb more and more water, so it just takes a bit of time to bring it together into a nice soft dough. Right, have you got anything to bring to the game that's gonna compete with that? I've been to India. Yes, I have, yes. You guys have never been to India, so you have no idea what it tastes like, so it doesn't matter if he's been to India or not. This is James's recipe and half of it is scribbled out. If you just like, just change your mind last minute. I didn't like what I cooked in the recipe lab and I haven't had another recipe lab, so. So you're, you're winging it? Yeah. Party on. I'm making a burnt aubergine curry. It's gonna be bitter. It's gonna go with a sweet mango chutney. It's gonna go with a delicious bread that may or may not work and some yogurt. I need to start with my bread because I have no idea if it's going to work or not and if it doesn't work, then I need to do something else. I just combined flour, salt, vegetable oil and water in a bowl, kneaded it for a few minutes and I'm going to leave it for an hour or maybe half an hour because time. <sighs> aubergines, I'm going to prick them. My pierced aubergines go directly onto the heat and I'm going to finish them with a blowtorch to get that skin really, really blistered. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? You tripped me up. Did you see that? Sabotage. James can't cook and Ben can't even stand up. Although I am glad that Ben mentioned the word sabotage because can you hear that noise? Curveball! Oh my God. So today's community suggested curveball. At some point during the video, the curveball klaxon will ring and one of the chefs will have to exit the kitchen and come and stand next to us. In the meantime, the other chef stays in the kitchen and has to manage both recipes. For five minutes. We will decide who comes out and when. And there will be no verbal communication to the other chef. I like the fact that with that curveball, there's nothing we can do. Nope. <laughs> ah, ah. It's too much, it's too much. I'm worried about the fire alarm. Once the dough's kneaded, wrap it in cling film. I'm gonna leave it to one side while I get on with everything else. Everything else? Four spuds, prick with a fork, microwaved, 10 minutes. I am using a few cheats in this recipe, microwave being one of them. The second, tinned chickpeas. I've got brown chickpeas, white chickpeas, I've drained them, I'm now gonna warm them up in water with two cloves of garlic, cumin seeds and salt, cinnamon stick and bay, star anise, and a tea bag. For my mango chutney, I have chopped up garlic, ginger and chilies, put them in a pan, fried them off for a little bit with some spices, lots of brown sugar, white wine vinegar and three mangoes. This is the traditional pot, a curré. It was offered to me by Nikki, who's on our team, and I thought, it's something that's been handed down through generations. I can't not use it. It's gorgeous. It's gonna be the base of my chickpea curry. Oil, turmeric, cumin seeds. When the cumin seeds start to pop, in with onion. Just had a message from Nikki, who's sitting the other side of that wall, <laughs> just to say, he absolutely said that wrong. We literally went through this 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Curveball? Curveball. Ebers, thank you for joining us. Your five minutes starts now. James, please continue your dish. And Ebers. You haven't even got the recipe because you're so confident, so I don't have a recipe to work from either. And I don't know how to use this pan. Well, we'll make sure this doesn't burn. And the longer these cook off, the better, I would say. This is going to be boring because I don't, he doesn't have a recipe. He doesn't have anything. Well, make it up then. I can't do that. I cannot do that to him. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to blowtorch my aubergines, which is a very important part of my recipe. Five, four, three, two, one. Go back in. Woohoo! Timer. Doesn't matter. Wasted. Wasted curveball. We need to pick our time more strategically 
for when we pull James out. It was your idea. So I've just taken the tea bag out. Right, what am I doing next? Spuds. Ben? Yeah. What's your, what's your plans, those potatoes? So I just want the fluffy insides, and then I'm going to turn it into a deliciously spiced potato filling. So um, in, uh, in the spirit of not wasting food, um, could Barry and I borrow those potato skins when you're done with them? Absolutely. Into my potatoes are going garam masala, ground cumin, chilli powder, black onion seeds and salt. And then once those potatoes have cooled, in with loads of freshly chopped coriander. Flavour, 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 flavour. With the onions soft and sweet, in goes chopped ginger. In the recipe that Nikki shared with me as well, there were two ingredients that I'd never used before and had to go and source. Dried mango powder and dried pomegranate seeds. A fair whack of each going into here. A generous amount of tomato puree going into the onion base. And cook that out for a few minutes. My parotta dough has rested for an hour-ish. And now I'm rolling it into balls. And I'm going to roll it as thin as possible. And then roll it into a sausage shape. And then roll it into a spiral. Fold it on top of each other. And then rest it and then roll it again. This might be a honeycomb moment, bear with me. Is this how you make honeycomb as well? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is brilliant. Is this a bit like a phyllo pastry in terms of how you're getting lots of, lots of layers? Yes. Cool. Like, like when you make, um, <clears throat> uh, is caramel the one where you have to take it to like, all right, is it 124 degrees? No. <laughs> Ben, which, um, which part of your recipe are you most nervous about? The bit I'm most excited about is the experience of you making your own at the table, but the whole point is the pastries have to have a hole in them. And if they don't puff up, it's a bit pointless. The bit I'm making now is a really flavoured water, basically. It's spicy, it's tangy, it's sweet, and it's super fresh from herb, and you've got to get all of those in balance. So I've got tamarind, ginger, cumin salt, sugar, chilli, we're leaving some seeds in, and loads of fresh mint and coriander. Blend it all up with loads of water, and then strain it off. Ah! Oh no, James! <gasps> oh! I made a hole in my dough. <laughs> Stop. Usually I'd put my mango chutney in the fridge to cool down. I'm going to put it in the freezer just because it takes less time and hopefully I don't forget about it. I'm going to scoop all the whole spices, the cinnamon stick, the cloves, the bay leaf out of the chickpea water. It's giving it all the flavour and then combine the two, the chickpea and the water into the tomato paste. Yes! Oh, can I borrow you while you're here? This is very hot. Open your mouth wide. Why? Just open your mouth really wide. I'm just checking for size. I want to make these to the single mouthful. How big, how wide can you go? Open your mouth wider. Oh, I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Oh, I don't no. know how big to make my panipuri. I want them to go in single. Yeah, if they're any bigger than that, we're going to have trouble. I'm not hungry anymore. Do you want these? Yes, I do. I'll get a dish. We'll put them through the sexes. <laughs> Sir? Please, thank you. Anything to pair this with? No. Look. Cheers. Cheers. Do you know, if there's one thing that I've learned mm -hmm. from these chef battles, is that we're really good at making potato skins. The next step is to toast off my spices, which are turmeric, coriander, cumin, asafoetida, and cinnamon. I'm going to toast off my spices and grind them to a paste. Meanwhile, my onions are frying off for 20 minutes to get lots of caramelization. In go my garlic and my chilies with the spices. And then the chopped tomatoes go in with a little bit of sugar, simmer for 15, 20 minutes. Then the aubergine goes in for another five minutes with a little bit of chopped coriander. And that is my curry done. Super simple. Another thing in my recipe that's hugely not traditional, I'm using a pasta roller to roll out this dough. When I tested it, you just need to roll it as thin as possible. It's fine to do it with a rolling pin. I just, I'm lazy. So this is the crunch point. Thinly rolled, cut dipped into oil. Now, if the oil is the right temperature and the dough is good enough, elastic enough, but also thin enough, they should puff up into a balloon and keep that air in there. Yes! That was the thing that if it didn't work, what I've ended up with is lots of cooked pastry, which I would crumble over the top of my chana masala, which is also a nice element and how I had it in Delhi. I did have a backup. <laughs> Flip them in the oil so they cook both sides, a nice golden brown, 
and crispy. That is magic how that works. Not all of them are great, so these ones I'm going to snap up and put on top of my chana masala. Chef lads, 15 minutes remaining, one curveball still to play. I thought you forgot about that. <laughs> nope. I was hoping they'd forgotten about that. With the potato filling cooled, fresh coriander goes through it, check it for seasoning, that's good to go. The final seasoning into my chana masala is garam masala and ground coriander. What's that noise, Barry? No, it's going. It is, it's, it's, I can hear the curveball, it's going. James, would you like to step out over here? Yeah, sure. Moral dilemma here, because when I stepped out, James was really quite nice. I mean, he didn't do anything, but neither did he sabotage. So knowing we were limited on time, I got ahead on my recipe, because being street food, much of it is already good to go, so that I now have the capacity to keep an eye properly on his dish, because it smells amazing. Aubergines are gonna go in, paratha with a nice golden color, I'll flip. Should still leave him time to plate. I wonder if his mango chutney's frozen yet. So I'm gonna get the aubergines in. Oh. Oh, there's a tinge of disappointment there. No, huh? no, not with the words, yeah. not with the words. No, keep your mouth closed. Keep your mouth closed. You ready? I'm going to try and flip his parenta. He's going to flip, he's going to toss it. <laughs> this could only go well. Whoa! Oh, well done! Yeah. Looks good, James. One minute remaining. There's some nail biting going on now. 20 seconds left. So I saw him do one earlier and he put his thumb through it. Is that what I'm aiming for? <laughs> Right, you've just earned yourself another minute. <laughs> and you're walking back in with three minutes to go. Two, one. Enter. James, you've got three minutes left. How do you think Ben got on? Um, I think he did a good job. Um, some things that I wouldn't have done, but... Such as? Not that much. I'd have probably coloured this a little bit more, but I've got another one. Um, aubergine I've probably added a bit later, but who is to know? And it's useful that it's in there already. One minute remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Five, four, three, two, one. And step away from the plates. Let's get these in the sexies. Congratulations, boys. Congratulations to us. Yes, and good to us. Food. I noticed that you've made your way onto the judging panel, which doesn't usually happen. Well, you know, <laughs> I uh, put the effort in in the intro, so I thought, you know, I deserve a payoff. <laughs> Ebers, tell us what you got. Pani puri with chana masala. Simple street food that I love. Part of the experience is getting involved. So the chana masala enjoy on its own. Otherwise, just basically pop a little bit of a hole in there, fill it with your potato mixture. Typically, this would then be dipped in there. But what we do instead is just pour, which is gorgeous, and then down in one before it goes soggy. It's coming through. Cheers. Mm. The water tastes different from what I expected. It's almost citrusy. I'd have, I'd have that over rice. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Mm. Yeah, it's a lot more fruit than I thought it was going to be. I mean, it's communal. I like it. This chanam salad is really rich. <laughs> and the lasting thought, not deliberate, but a celebration of street food that tastes delicious. And I wanted to avoid using the V word up till now, but it's vegan. Let's, let's oh, watch dish two. This is gonna be a good day. That's more like pastry than bread. Mm. Oh, burnt aubergine's one, isn't it? When you put burnt in the title of a dish, you're not entirely sure where it's gonna go. And when you taste that, you go, I get it. Delicious burnt mm -hmm. aubergine. It's so smoky, I can't believe you made that in such a short amount of time. I thought to get that sort of smoking should be cooking for hours and hours on end. That is a fascinating dish as well that tastes fantastic when 
it's all on one spoon. Shall we? You stepping outside? Oh yeah, I was waiting for you to go, but it's not. It's us, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. the way this works. Yeah. Shall we? We should. Can I come? I want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They've either moved off topic and are just working out what they're doing this weekend, or it's very close. Okay, so what we loved about yours, Ben, was that it was a story. There was a story behind it, and that there were lots of little components. We loved the communal feel of bringing it all together at the table. We thought the potato in particular tasted fantastic. James's, we felt the bread. We'd never eaten anything like that before. That was a new experience. The mango chutney was a version of something that we're so familiar with, but was spectacular and like nothing else we'd had before. And the burnt aubergine worked exceptionally well. So we basically had to judge it on the entire dish. And so our winner is James. Okay because we just felt like when you brought it all together in one mouthful, you got everything you could hope for. Both exceptional dishes that I would happily sit here and eat all of. Yeah. So you would, hypothetically, or you actually can do that now? Well, I was just going to wait until the camera stopped, but yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Shock win for James there, or was it? Do you agree, do you disagree? Comment down below, let us know who you think should have won. Now my favourite part of these videos is reading all your comments and telling us where we possibly went wrong when creating traditional dishes. Definitely went wrong, yeah. Which is the theme of this week's podcast, Feast Your Ears. How far is too far when it comes to fusion food? If you want that and a brand new podcast every single week, sign up to the club in the link downstairs. Quick side note, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you do not miss a single video when we upload every Wednesday, every Sunday. And every Sunday you get a dad joke of the week you and do. if that's not worth subscribing for then I don't know what is. <laughs> Hit me. <clears throat> My dear old grandmother, she always used to say, the best way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Probably why she lost her job as a cardiac surgeon, but she meant well. <laughs> as we mentioned, we don't just make top quality YouTube videos. No. We've built the Sorted Club, where we use the best things we've learned to create stuff that's hopefully interesting and useful to other food lovers. Check it out if you're interested. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in a few days. He may not be on form today, but... Boy, can that man can just say cut up a mango. <laughs> <laughs>